Hello, welcome back. In this video, we will consider how we should choose the proposes y in an important sampling estimate so that the error of the method is as small as possible. So let's jump straight in. Let me just summarize what we have found. The mean squared error we know already from the past of the original Monte Carlo estimate is 1 over n variance f of x. The mean squared error of the important sampling estimate we can write in two different ways. We can either use the original result we just applied a Monte Carlo estimate to the function f times phi over psi. So we could, using this result, say it's 1 over n variance f of y times phi of y over psi of y. Or we could use what we have just proved in the previous video. We could write it as 1 over n variance f of x minus expectation f of x squared times 1 minus phi of x over psi of x. And now the second form is much easier to compare to the first expression. So the original Monte Carlo estimate we have 1 over n variance f of x. And for the new estimator, the important sampling estimator, we have the same actually, 1 over n variance f of x. But then there is a minus, so let me just take this apart if we do it like this. Then we need to write 1 over n. And this here is the extra term which makes the difference between the important sampling estimate and the Monte Carlo estimate. So the question is, is that positive or negative? So if the term we subtract is positive, then the important sampling estimate is better. That is our result. And now it comes down to the question, is this positive? And we get to choose y to make it so. So the question is, which y should we choose? We need to make expectation f of x squared 1 minus phi of x divided psi of x positive and large if we can. Where psi is the thing we can really choose, psi is the density of y. So how can we do this? 1 minus phi is large if phi over psi is small, which is the case if psi is large. That is good in a sense, but psi is the probability density. So psi can look like anything, but the thing we know is the area under the graph of psi is 1. So integral psi of x dx equals 1, because it's a probability density. So we cannot just make psi large. The area is 1, so if we make it larger somewhere, we need to make it smaller somewhere else. So the real question is, where should we make psi large? And that is the reason the method is called important sampling. Namely, we can concentrate psi in the important regions, the ones where it makes most of a difference. So where should we make psi large? And if you look back at the expression I wrote, again, if psi is large, then phi over psi is small, and 1 minus phi over psi is large. So we can make this second bracket large, but not overall, because if we make it large somewhere, it will go smaller elsewhere. So you see what we need to do. This f of x square in front, that modulates things. And what we should do is we should make psi large where that counts most. So the solution is make psi large where f of x squared is large. So if there's a region in space, where f is large, then that's the region where psi should be large, and that means the distribution of y has most of its mass there, so that means y should be somehow concentrated there. Good. So what I'll do now is I will show you in R a bit of how we can do that in practice. And what you should do is you should now go to the book chapter. I'll write a bit more about how to choose y in the chapter. There is some more detail which I haven't discussed here. So you should go and reread the section that has the proof of proposition 3.23, which we mostly covered here. There's just a bit of boring steps left. But then on page 87, there is some discussion on how to choose y, and you should read that carefully and keeping what I just said in mind. So you read this, and in the meantime, we go and try that out with R. Okay, so let's see how we can use such an estimate in R. So we need to pick ourselves a function and a random variable. So what I do here is I say aim is aim is to estimate the expectation of exponential of minus x minus 3. I'm just making something up to the fourth power, where x is standard normal distributed. And the aim is also to do this using important sampling. Again. That is a made-up function just for the purpose of making a good example, but you will be able to apply the same technique to any other function you may encounter where you need to compute an expectation. So let's first get a sense of what's going on. 
So that function, if you look at it, exponential of something negative, so that will be between 0 and 1, and it will be close to 1 if x is approximately 3, and close to 0 if it's away from 3. So let's make a plot just to check this. For the plot, I use an x range from, say, minus 5 to 5 in, say, 100 steps, and then I plot x against exponential of minus x to the minus 3 to the fourth power. And I run the line plot. And what we get is what we expected, close to 3, that function is 1. And away from 3, that goes rather quickly to 0. Good. Now, just for comparison, let's see where x lives. x is standard normal distributed, so we know that should be close to 0. And to visualize this, I can plot x against d norm x, that's the density of a standard normal distribution. I should not have used plot. I write lines that adds a line to an existing plot rather than starting a new plot. And let's make this blue so that we can tell the lines apart. So that's the density of a standard normal distribution. So what you see is most x values, the bulk of the x values is close to zero and sees nothing interesting happen for f. And only the values which are basically larger than two, which happens very rarely, but these values see what shape f is. So you can already see x is not very good at exploring f, and that's where important sampling will make a difference. So before we do that, first I want to do a cosmetic thing just to make the plot a bit nicer. I can set the plot margins, and you see in particular at the top there is too much space. So I do par my, which means margin in inches, and you give the margins four of them in the order bottom, left, top, right. So bottom, I don't know, maybe 0 0.9, left maybe also 0 0.9, but top we want really small. I do 0 0.1 and right we also don't need so much, also 0 0.1. So let's rerun that. That gives just a bit nicer looking plot, but of course doesn't change anything. Good. So what do we do next? I want, before we use important sampling, just because it's easy, try out what we get with standard Monte Carlo estimation. So step one, that's not required. It's just for illustration and comparison of results later, is standard Monte Carlo estimation. There we know what to do. We pick an n, and we have now learned how to do that carefully, but now let's not worry and just take a million. Then we generate our x values, uh, norm n. I don't need to specify mean or standard deviation because I want a standard normal distribution, and if I don't do anything, I get mean zero and standard deviation one. To save some work, I will give this function a name. Let's modify this straight up here. What I want to do is I want to say f is the function is an argument of x, which gives exponential of minus x minus 3 to the 4. So then here I can write f of x, and I rerun that, but of course the picture will not change. But then down here I can just write mean f of x to get my Monte Carlo estimate. So functions, if you haven't seen them before, they allow to give a shorthand name to a sequence of commands, and here the shorthand name is f. I introduced that up here, and here I said f is shorthand for that. And whatever I plug in as the argument of f, that replaces the little x here, so that goes here. And now if you look down here, I wrote capital X as the argument, and with it using this rule, little x is replaced with whatever I put here. So we will get exponential of minus capital X minus 3 to the 4. So that's just introducing shorthand notation, but you see it saves us some typing later on, and also it makes the notation look a bit more like the mathematical notation, so it's a bit easier to follow what's going on. Good, so we have some function, and mean f of x, you see the value to the right is our Monte Carlo estimate. Now we have learned how to determine this estimate. Let's do the RMSE, I give this a name, just so that we can refer back to it later. So RMSE MC for Monte Carlo, that is the square root of the variance of f of x divided by n. And that is a bit tricky, that var here, that is an r command that determines the sample variance. And what we really would want is the exact variance of f of x, we don't know that, but we discussed that we can use as an approximation to that the sample variance of f of x. And that's what I do here, so that looks somewhat misleadingly close to the mathematical notation that is not the actual error, that is only an estimate for the error because this little var here that is the sample variance which is only an estimate for the true variance. 
but still that's what we can use and so rmse monte carlo is 0 0.0017 so you see we learned we can be we can expect to be within two of these standard error of these root mean squared errors of the value we got so we would think the truth is somewhere close to 0 0.021 and it should be only about two of these root mean squared errors away either positive or negative so we would think there are probably three correct digits here let me just rerun that if i rerun that i would think i should again get 0 0.021 so let's see what we get so we get new random numbers new mean 0 0.021 021. I do it once more. Here it happened we could get 20, but then a 97. So that is the standard Monte Carlo estimate. Now, step two important sampling. The thing we need to do is here we need to choose y, the random variables we use for the sampling to replace x. And we have learned we should try to concentrate them where x is large. So the obvious thing would be to choose a normal distribution centered around 3. I just do a plot to verify that that's a good idea. So if I do d norm x, but then for mean I choose 3, you see that looks kind of plausible and we can probably make the standard deviation a bit smaller because still that has a wider range than f has. So let's try the standard deviation. It's currently 1 if I set this to 0 0.8, maybe even less. Let's try 5. Maybe that's not enough. Let's say 0.6. The answer will not depend on that, but the efficiency of the method depends on that. So we could actually study how does the error depend on the standard deviation. So let me just rerun that, that we get the excess lines out of the picture. The red line is the proposal distribution we use. So that's the distribution I will use for the y. We have to choose y, and we use y is normal distributed with mean 3 and variance 0.6 squared. Again, I think I said this earlier, you need to be a bit careful. The normal distribution in R, the second extra argument, is the standard deviation, whereas in mathematical notation, what you write after the mean is the variance. So I need in the mathematical notation to write 0.6 squared, whereas in R, I need to just write 0.6. So that plot just gives us what is our density of y. Now we need to remember what we need to do. Our samples will now be generated according to this distribution. So as samples, we take y, r norm, let's take n again, a million. But now I need to specify the mean, so it's 3, and I specify the standard deviation as 0.6. That's the ones we plotted the density of. And just naively, the estimate, if you remember, was the Monte Carlo estimate of f of y times phi of y divided by psi of y. And I introduce phi and psi as shorthand for what we need here. So phi needs to be the density of x. That's the blue line. So phi is just a shorthand for d norm x. And I do psi as shorthand for d norm x with extra arguments 3 and 0.6. And now we can get the estimate straight away. We can do mean f of y times phi of y divided by psi of y. And hopefully that's close to the 0 0.021 we had before. It is gone wrong. And I mentioned this before. See, things will happen if you use R, if you get an error message. The important bit is to first try to find out what has gone wrong. So here, error in psi of y could not find function psi. That is first a bit confusing because I defined psi here. So what I would do first is I would check for typos. I spelled psi. The thing it wanted was psi. So that's not the problem. But hopefully you have all spotted this. If you look here back at the list of past commands, the blue things are commands I've run. I have generated y. I've defined phi, but you see I forgot to run the line which defines psi. So I wrote it here, but I didn't run it. So I press on my Mac, I press command enter to run it. There's also a menu entry. You could have used the run menu up here, but whatever you do, you have to run that. And this time it works. And we get again our 0 0.0211. So that is comparable to the estimates like here and there we had before. So first, it seems to work. Now the question is, did we gain anything? And we can compute the mean squared error or root mean squared error again. So let's do that RMSE important sampling. So root means just I take the square root. And then I need to write the mean squared error. And we had two formulas. And the one we should use here is not the one we used for the argument how to choose y, but we should use the simpler looking one, which was just variance of f of y times phi of y divided by psi of y and the variance divided by n. 
So we can do that and RMSEIS is this strange looking thing. I spoke about this before. This E here means it's shorthand, it's called the scientific notation of numbers. It means times 10 to the minus 5. So that is 3.11 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's a very small number that would be, if I write it in just ordinary notation, the next digit would be 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. So that would be this number. 0 0.00003110 because it's 3 point something times 10 to the minus 5. So that is a small number and we need to compare that. The Monte Carlo error was this, so that is 1 times 10 to the minus 4. So that is about 10 times larger, let's do the fraction. If it was too optimistic, it is only about 3 times smaller the important sampling error, but still that is an improvement. And that is how you do an important sampling estimate in R. So, this finishes our discussion of section 3.3.1 and we will continue in the next video with another variance reduction method, the method of antithetic variables from section 3.3.2. Thank you all.